So, so first of all, thanks all of you for joining. I appreciate this very much. Some of you might know me from running webinars every second Monday, which would be today as well. Some others know me from the very past when I've been living in Germany or in Switzerland or in New Zealand, or then when I came to Australia. And it's a big pleasure to see so many of you joining. And um, you might have seen in the invite, I wrote there that I connect this, not just in being here as having birth here just on a Monday in May, but also that I have a passion for writing books. And I'm happy that I have many book authors who I see. And the first one, the first of all of them, the first time I started to write about a book from another author is here as well. It's Ian McLaughlin with one of the best sales books I've ever read, Rebirth of the Salesman. Being myself in the sales area, I'm very pleased to have a couple of sales book authors in there as well. Now I count Andrew Hogarth from, from New Zealand, my author number eight. I'm sure we will get up to 10 of them. So that's lovely. So very kind. So what I thought I wanted to do, as we all know, worldwide, we can't necessarily meet face to face. And I had the pleasure last year when I had a bit of my rounded birthday to meet some of you in, uh, in lovely Sydney in Balmain for a small birthday party. I thought this year must be much larger. And Zoom helped us to achieve exactly that. So, and I wanted to combine it in not just seeing all of you, but maybe to have a chance also to show you something which is on one side new, on the other side explains a lot. Many faces who I see now in the call are connected in my way coming to Australia. And sometimes I realize this only much, much later. But now I see my friend and brother Mauro Kirsner in front of me here because he exactly has been working at a place in one of the Airbnbs where then later I stayed without even that knowing. So there's many people who have been coming into my life at one moment in time. And then when I came to a place like here, I could really leverage this. And very often there was even the chance to look back and find out there are people who know each other. And there's Dave Brabham here from New Zealand who are now from the UK. I potentially come on to this and talk about this. And what I also like to see are things like, I have been working in Europe so long, in many countries or connected to countries like Romania, where my best friend in Switzerland has been of course from Romania. And my best friend in Australia is from Romania. And now I have another one from Romania who joined, Chibuna Mila. Good to see you. You will be surprised on one slide today. So what I wanted to do for today is I wanted to show you and launch a book. And I'm very happy for this book that I also have the publisher here, which is Samantha. So the book is this one, which is not easy to show with a Zoom background. And I prepared a couple of slides. The book is called Lessons I Learned. And the beauty of this book is I got the chance to write about a lesson which I learned, like all the other authors. And what I learned was a situation in life that made me change the life without wanting. And I ended up here, and that was a good one. So, and I would like to talk you through this. If that is fine for you, then, um, then I, uh, I will do that. So there is now not everybody apparently has it easy to join, but should normally, should normally work because we are only 44. Thanks Scott for, for at least trying this, so that is good. So I will now start, uh, start sharing my screen and the slides. And please, if any of you can say, if you can see my slides, that would be quite good. You can see. Very nice. Good. This is good. Okay. So Very that's nice. Good. That's a good one. Let's see how if the recording includes these buttons or not. Anyway, good one. So, thank you and welcome to the virtual birthday party with the book launch of Lessons I Learned um, today, 4th of May, 2020, and let's go. I will also, I think what I should do, what I should do is to mute every one of you, except Paul, please you unmute yourself. And then whoever wants to speak can then easily speak. So that's the best way. So, 
that was too fast. So welcome, here we go. So, so welcome to my birthday webinar. I hope you can all see me, I hope so. Otherwise, please let me know. And Paul, if you could please unmute yourself, would be good. Yep. Thank you. So last year, I had a bit of a more rounded birthday. As you can see here, Alexander and me, we had the pleasure to see even one of these very rarely open, open buildings um, uh, from government side in Kiribili. Actually, Barbara, that's opposite of the place where you have been once living four years ago. And then later I had a nice birthday party, a very tiny one. And some of you from this picture are here in today, like Paul, like Laura, like Julian. So that was a very kind of you coming there. But this year we do it a little bit different. So uh, here we have on the right side, Paul, my best mate here in Sydney. Hi there? everyone. Um, thank you for um, coming to Gunnar's virtual birthday party event. Um, he's uh, so excited to have all of you here and I'm very excited myself to um, be a part of this. And it's uh, very special because I've known Gunnar for a very long time. We've met in Sydney and um, with, uh, with, uh, within a few minutes, we actually discovered that we've got a lot of things in common. Um, and one of these things, it's uh, the German order keeping. So he's tasked me with this uh, tonight. Um, so um, as Gunnar has done, he's already muted all the participants. And um, don't see it as um, as obligatory to to comply. So if you do wish to contribute with anything exciting and amazing, um, absolutely unmute yourself and um, and go ahead. So tonight we're also going to be launching the book lessons I've learned, um, followed by a birthday surprise. So keep the cheers and uh, happy birthdays until then. Um, the, after, um, after the little surprise that we've got for Gunnar, we will do the um, website that also has a little bit of a surprise itself, a little bit of the text and recording, um, but that is also going to be coming in your inbox tomorrow. Um, all this being said, Gunnar, um, I do have a question. Uh, didn't you yeah. actually launch a book similar to this? Yeah. Maybe you want to talk about yeah. it? Yes, indeed. And the reason is, I mean, some of you know that I like somehow writing books. So I have done a couple of them in the meantime. And the first one here when coming to Australia, where it's not about writing tour guide books in German anymore. The first one I've been actually included in, there was a book called Leaders of Influence. I try to hold it here. And that was from a, a publisher, Samantha Jensen. I found about her in Eventbrite, where I looked into where should I go in the evening? What events are there? And this is a leadership book. So then I had the chance to contribute and I wrote my very first ever fictive story about a person at a software company in Sydney who there became an accidental manager who was a normal good contributor, became an accidental manager and who turned himself into an intentional leader. And I wrote it at that time also when I just went to uh, mentorship programs and uh, leadership programs at the Institute of Managers and Leaders, and I had the chance to write about that. We had a nice book launch in Melbourne that is here with all of the authors and with Samantha, and we had later a book launch in Sydney in September 2018, when I also changed towards my second uh, company. So that was book launch part number one in Melbourne and in Sydney. And then comes book launch number two. And that is this book, what I'm talking about here, uh, called Lessons I Learned. Here I have, of course, Opera House, but also my friend and brother Mario Beckett on it, who is writing his books. And we both had this out at the same time, plus minus. What I like on books as a reader and as a writer, I like both of it, like the chef who likes to not just to cook, but also to eat. You see also here the Sydney Opera House behind. I wrote for maybe 16 years about musicals for a magazine in, uh, in uh, Germany and about opera in a magazine in Austria. And my view was always, I give to the readers my ears and my eyes that they can make and draw their own conclusions about it. And I've been happy that I had the chance to write about a couple of performances of the Sydney Opera House. So my view is the reader, have the reader in mind that I know how to write about that. That was an important topic. And then I thought, as I read a lot of the books, why not to run a series of reviews, not just the reviews like you find on Amazon, 
but rather um, a, a deep, a deep, um, a deep type of reader uh, uh, of reviews. I write seven paragraphs about the book, and later I write seven questions, and the authors are answering this. And if I remember this very well here today, then we have a couple of authors who I captured, like Ian McLaughlin, the first one, like Jacqueline I've seen here, uh, Mario will join, and um, Joel has been here, Andrew Howard from New Zealand, and I really like this series about one book, maybe two books per month I can capture on this one. And that was what takes me into this type of book writing, which takes a big part also of my free time, of course. And the, the, the specific thing about lessons I learned is that Samantha came to me and said, as she has this series of her chapter books or anthologies, there was some space free for this particular book. And uh, Sam, having you in today, I put a little bit about your site here. So this was a book launch in Melbourne, which I missed last year, end of last year in November. And I thought one day I will do something here. But I couldn't do in these times, of course, to meet in person. So therefore, I thought this virtual work is, is the best one. Sam, are you here? Can you talk a little bit of words about this book as such? Absolutely. Once again, Gunnar, happy birthday and congratulations mm -hmm. on the book launch of Lessons I Learned as you were sharing um, yeah, a little bit about the journey you've been on over the last two and a bit years. It's an absolute privilege for me to be here tonight to support you. But also, I just want to take a moment to quickly acknowledge all those of you that are joining this call um, to celebrate, you know, Gunnar's birthday as well as the launch. So good morning to those of you joining us from Germany and Switzerland. And for those of you from Australia and New Zealand, it's a good evening. So... Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. In terms of lessons I learned, as Gunnar mentioned, for those of you on the call, um, I reached out to Gunnar because he has been one of our published authors before. He, he was um, with us in a book called Less, uh, Leaders of Influence, uh, where he shared his story around leadership and what that meant to actually lead rather than manage people. And I think that's so important for quite a few of you that would be managing teams and really stepping out there as leaders it's so important to nurture and connect with people you know really from that aspect and then in lessons i learned he talks about a very different side of his journey which has been an absolute privilege to publish um this story gunar i mean you really share a very raw and real conversation of what that day was like i'm not going to go into the details because i want to give gunar the opportunity to talk about that chapter in lessons i learned but for those of you on the call, it is an incredible journey that he has been on and it really shows a lot of persistence, commitment and also honest conversation. I think in the world that we live in today, honest conversation is vital and Gunnar, yeah, you do justice to that. So once again, happy birthday and congratulations. Thank you, Sam, for the kind words. Uh, uh, thank you to Melbourne. Yeah, let me talk about this book. Because the lessons I learned is typically something by the title where myself and of course the other 10 authors who are living across Australia from, from Perth uh, up to Brisbane, everyone went through a kind of experience and wanted to share the outcome out of this one. So, and I will talk about my, my story, which is related into the way how I came here to Australia. So the chapter here that I have inside, it's called From Laid Off to Paid Off. And as I have also some of colleagues from my time in HP, so I see Tessie, I see Jonas. So that's, uh, that's uh, very nice. And of course, Bea, you have been at that time with HP as well. Um, without mentioning where I've been in the past and so on, I wrote about what can happen. And unfortunately, that is a current topic in this year as well. When from one day to the other, the job is not there anymore for whatever reason. And that is actually what this book is about, to look into how the world in, me, in the meantime changed totally. What I want to do is I pick a couple of pictures which are somehow related into the story. I won't read the whole story of it overall because that would be uh, 20 minutes boring listening to one person who's not native English speaking, but I will pick a couple of topics out of this one. So. For those who, uh, who know, or maybe even not, so I've been quite a long time in, in the same company and really liked it, liked the value, liked everything and had amazing journey in that company and really liked that. So what happened was only 
there was a quite big of a change that 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 came and in this change um, that deer company split into two pieces but i've been somewhat sitting in between and then this was not there anymore so one day actually i've been leading an activity and that was here in, in prague in the office in, in czech republic it was an activity and actually having Tessie there, that was a mid-market activity that you and me have been doing together, working with the sales, uh, with the call center, which was right from this building, been working with them after seeing my boss for a couple of days who came over from Paris. On the, on the, on the, on the last day in that week, I got, a, I got uh, took into the meeting, glad he was also there in Prague, uh, to say that uh, unfortunately the journey will now end and it will be all completely different because company splits into two pieces and therefore the number of management position and so on and so on. So that is called basically the situation of a redundancy. I wrote about this first time in this book. I've never done that before and I will not read it because it was certainly after 16 years some kind of emotional story, but I will read about what came afterwards. The interesting thing was when I came home with a message that my journey will not continue on this one, then uh, my wife Alexander said, thank you, say thank you to your boss. It was a great time, but let's move on. She will bake a cake for my boss. That was an interesting one. So I learned one thing, which is the change curve. It's not about what you have on slides. It's not what you learn in any kind of trainings. It was real life, not being part of that anymore. So that was an interesting experience for me and also to write about it. So then let me look into a little bit portions of this story. And for those who might wonder about all these lovely colors, that is not in Canberra, that is in Zurich. That is the house where I spent 17 years. So during the following weeks until the final departure, leaving my team and company with respect, I worked on my mindset to prepare for the future. Instead of doing the same things over and over again, I welcomed the chance for a change. Like so many fully engaged corporate employees, there was never enough time for proper vacations, despite being granted five weeks in Switzerland compared to other countries with less. The real vacation time is actually reduced by the expectation to be always reachable by incoming emails and other notifications on smartphones and tablets even when talking and taking well-deserved holidays. That resulted in a negative work-life balance and I decided to change it. While it has been seen rather negative in the past, if somebody is not employed in the well-experienced middle age of 40 plus, a sabbatical is now perceived positively with a time out of a couple of months can be dedicated also to a rejuvenating period. I further wrote in the book about all about the sabbatical, what it means. And then we decided to take a longer trip from Switzerland to New Zealand, following our dream of returning to the same place where we had studied English some 17 years before, but finally exploring the country in more detail than on our initial trip. And what happened? Beyond the beauty of the South Pacific region, we realized that work-life balance seems to be better down under. A short week in Sydney within the New Zealand travels enticed me to consider a move into this marketplace of creativity where people from all walks of life and countries work together. Australia is also known as a test market for new technologies, which is great for an IT sales professional like me. But how to plan such a move, find a visa, a job, and more importantly, people around us to know, like, and trust. And you see this picture, Barbara, Bert, Jonas, as a Swiss, I must love that. And yes, we don't have that big mountains here in Australia, but they are so close. I've been every year back in New Zealand. So let's go on, the second journey to move on. Quickly, I changed my mindset from running in the perpetually repeating hamster wheel of work in a well-known corporate life to another departure into the unknown, but this time with a clear target instead of a touristic trip. Completing an inventory of my own wants, needs, and skills, I realized that a management training with accreditation was missing to officially learn what I have been doing already. 
I heard that Australia enjoys an international reputation for education since a friend of mine completed his MBA in Adelaide. And after some research, I chose the Advanced Diploma of Leadership and Management at the Australian Institute of Management because they are the only organization at that time to provide leadership skills assessment for the government. And by the way, having Julian here, the first phase, what I saw in Australia, it's very, very nice, Julian. You have been always the receptionist there, the concierge to welcome new students, exotic students like myself. So the, the Institute of Managers and Leaders, IML, also runs a series of events with networking possibilities. In Australia, most people are open to talk to others as it's a cultural melting pot of people from many generations. By the way, that's what I thought. But all of us here from Australia on the call, you might potentially see Australia is not a melting pot. For me, it's a salad bowl. You can recognize the taste of cucumber, of lettuce, of tomato. But the sum is the taste and that makes it. So it's not globalization, like every taste is the same. It is a combination of all. And that's what I love here. So I took two months off to explore Sydney as a potential place to plan for our future attend this leadership program to gain another qualification, learn about the visa options, and how to find employment using my backpack of experience. Booking a trip to, uh, from Zurich to Sydney was no different to a European trip, just longer. Sounds good in theory, but there were further challenges and lessons to learn. And the picture that you can see here, that was my arrival in Sydney on a cruise ship in February 16. If you come to a city like this, how can you not fall in love with it? It's impossible. But there was one thing. I came in May 16 this Monday, first Monday, four years ago, and I didn't know anyone. Julian, you've been the first one. But can you imagine how it feels not knowing anyone after moving to a new place or testing it out as in my case? Even when surrounded by many people, it can hurt and provoke a feeling of being alienated instead of safe and home. What sounds exciting for a business trip or vacation can be a scary experience, at least in the beginning. There was no safety net if anything went wrong, no advice from friends or neighbors, and you can feel totally lost and alone. In addition, things can worsen when language or culture are different from your home and a weekend trip to loved ones is out of reach. These days, even more. So what you can see here, that was my third day at the Australian Institute of Management. That was the birthday at that time of Wednesday. And I got this lovely welcome. And I really, really liked that. Not only this, I'm still in contact with some of the participants, but also with John Roberts, with the trainer. On that very day, even also I met in the evening, I went to meetup groups and one meetup group, a particular one was led by a career coach, by an expert, by Dick Lamb. And he asked, is there anyone who wants to show his CV? He can help. I said, here, happy to give you my CV. And, he, and I realized Australia is different than in Europe. It's not the same. So it was for me the way to learn networking. It was for me the way to learn how job search actually works. So connecting with strangers is not just about learning how to exist in a new place. It is about learning how to live and thrive. The people I met were curious about my story and what brought me there. So I felt accepted and welcomed. Motivated to make a difference, the place gave me energy to building, uh, for building a strong network in a reasonably short time frame using the following steps and they're outlined in the book. I will repeat some here. But again, coming to this particular burst in 2016, I went into another organization called Internations, the world's largest net, uh, uh, networking for expats. And I met one bloke from Lebanon called Bassam. He's now one of my two best mates. And not only this that we met, he was in Cisco that time, we met every now and then, we became close friends. But now these nearly four years later, Bassam and I both started about the same time in a new company in the same building. Him in VMware, me at Hootsuite. How can that be? And the other best mate, Paul, is around the corner in the former Hootsuite office at Dropbox. Sydney is a village. 
and it took me a while to get that and I love the networking here. So a couple of things what I've been doing, I've done when I've been at Switzerland, a local market research. And those who know me from my time at HP, when I looked after Central Eastern Europe, it was kind of known to me to learn into new cultures. And then I went into, into the enterprise value business. So Tessie, you might remember, I looked into the country for the mid-market. When I went into the retail segment in Russia, that is just an activity that became normal for me. So getting to know the Australian and New Zealand marketplace was great to do this uh, local market research. And one thing what I've then done as well, I connected with a couple of industry professionals in advance. And here comes another funny thing. One day, 2006, I met with Dave Brabham, now here on the call, living in Wellington, New Zealand, but at that time in the UK. He was my counterpart. We have been sitting together with another bloke called Ben. He's now at Dell in Sydney, but I didn't know that. I met in Wellington, I met Dave and talked, I consider moving here. He said, oh, I know a guy in Dell. You know him as well, it was Ben. As soon as I came to Australia, to Sydney, I got a call from Dell. Do you come to a job interview next Monday? I said, of course, I'm here, no problem. How the, and when I've been there, I met this bloke, Ben. And the reason why I've been, we both talked, we three talked together because I gave a training. And the trainer then on LinkedIn wrote me, Gunnar, do you consider going to Sydney? Let me introduce you to Peter Strokop, who is German. You surely can talk to him. That's the guy here on this slide. I connect dots together of few people and I saw huge networks behind. Peter Strokop is a part of the sales mastermind group, which are sales coaches and book authors in the sales and marketing profession. That's how I got into Kian McLaughlin and Tony Hughes and all of those who are, whose book I'm reading only because I started maybe with two people and connect them further. So I learned that when you go to a new place, look who you potentially know over two corners, it will surely reward. And that was exactly the case. So I connected with a couple of industry professionals in advance. Then I found networking events before I moved over. There's this phenomenon called meetup. I'm even now a meetup owner here in Sydney as well. And some others I know as well, like Jacqueline, who, that was nice to meet you in, in your meetup group. So there's different type of events uh, and it's a big pleasure to attend, particularly for an introvert, a born introvert like myself. So what else I've done? So some of the networking events were also associated into the small business area. In small businesses, we have plenty of professionals like coaches, like consultants, like video experts, like Jeff Anderson here in the call as well. And then I met Adrian McLean, the lady here in the middle. Later, she organized bigger conferences and invited me as speaker. My first three or four events built my whole network after four years. That was good. So what else I've done? So I switched, by the way, on LinkedIn immediately into the new location and realized LinkedIn is not a job search tool. LinkedIn is a newspaper. I started to write on it. And I realized, as, as a writer in German, apparently it, it resonates with a couple of people. So that apparently worked quite well. And this is the office of LinkedIn in Sydney. And I'm very happy now to work basically left from that room. Our office is next door. So for those who potentially see me on LinkedIn every now and then, um, I may be every day on it. And it was, it's a great pleasure to really, as a writer, to utilize LinkedIn as a way, as a blogger, to write and to express certain learnings what I have. And that is what I like a lot about it. And I'm very pleased, as social media means a lot, in this journey to move over, that I'm now working in that particular area. So um, what else I've done? I, of course, then I met and uh, followed up with the context because the worst thing you can do at a networking event is just to exchange business cards and nothing is going on. So then I rather looked, what can I do? Not, hey, can, I, can you give me a job? But listening, active listening to find out what I can learn. And then one gentleman connected with me, that's Tony Hughes here on the left side, uh, in the meantime, 300 and plus thousand followers. He wrote one of the best books I've ever, I've ever read, um, Joshua Principle. And that is a book about a mentorship, about a sales mentorship and a sales methodology. 
That's really nice. I learned a lot while moving over. And the good thing is being in one company for long can be very rewarding. But I felt a little bit like reborn to see that there is some other content outside to learn. And that is very good. So I, I enjoy that. And this is the sales mastermind group where uh, uh, Kian, uh, as you're on the call, and, and, and Tony and Graham and all of them are speaking and talking about where does the sales professional go in the future? I'm very happy and grateful at HP that I had the chance not only to move out of product into sales. So also Jonas, as you on the call, you have done the same move. So that's very good. But also that I moved further from a smaller go-to-market of serving retailers into the enterprise world, because that's where most of the jobs are, where most of the activities are, uh, are, are done. And as a former software engineer by trade, what I learned, I'm happy to be back in the software business here in Australia. So that is good. And then what then happened after I received the working visa within 11 days, packed the stuff out of Zurich, and then we moved over. So here, basically, after further job searching in Sydney remotely, while being back in Zurich for a couple of weeks, I found the right company which like my work experience abroad and my approach locally, so I received my visa sponsorship. By the way, thanks to Laura here on the call and her contacts in terms of visa agents. During my third trip to Sydney that year for the face-to-face -face interviews and contract signing, I asked myself if those weeks back in Switzerland were just like vacations, as I could immediately reconnect with my already established local network in Sydney. Australia was becoming home. Receiving the work visa within just 11 days, we packed our container in a rush and finally moved to Sydney, starting our new adventure. The journey was completed from laid off to paid off. And the inner journey along the change curve showed me what was possible in accepting my redundancy situation and finding out what I could gain on personal development. So here we can see our neighbors at that time here in the house celebrating Christmas. How awesome that is Christmas on the Southern Hemisphere in 30, 35 plus degrees, completely different. So when I take this, the experience that I went from end of 2015 and within a year later, that was an interesting experience because I call it redundancy as chance for change. And I'm very well aware of that in the current situation, there are some more people who are facing redundancy as their positions are made redundant never the person. So what have I done? I observed later and put it into seven steps. So first of all, welcome to reality. I received the unwanted message and closed the work in peace to build the right mindset for the process to come. It, I've been grateful that I had the chance to meet my team in Denver for the last time. And at Tessie, that's when we met also the last time. Second step, I took some time off. Empty the brain of corporate jargons, habits, and rituals, combined with travel to see a different environment, which turns into the start of a journey into ourselves. That's when we came back out of, uh, out of New Zealand. Then check the alternatives. Open the eyes to what else could be possible and set off, continue on the same path as before, which mostly looks logically and attractive on the first sight. Should I move from HP to Lenovo, oh, no. to Microsoft, to Oracle? Of course I could. If I'm a football player, if I'm playing F at uh, Young Boys Bern, what would I do? Maybe go to Basel, maybe go to Zurich. But I don't play tennis then. But maybe there are alternatives. Number four, deep dive into yourself. Capture the inner journey of reflection and gap analysis to prepare for the next role and place. That was my understanding that I want to move from hardware back to software in a country which is known as a marketplace for testing, for testing new technologies of services. Invest in your mastery, learn, upskill and improve to adopt towards the needs in the marketplace and gain more knowledge and proficiency. That was my study at the Australian Institute of Management to learn about leadership from a non-corporate world. And I made great, great friendships within the Institute and also within the marketplace. And then action to get back on track. Move from the winning resume and improved personal branding 
towards interviews and further into the offering state, ideally within the hidden job market. And the hidden job market is a very special feature by itself. And I'm happy to call two career coaches, my friends who really know this topic very well. It's not only Dick Lamb, but also Jane Jackson, who's uh, hopefully now on the call as well. And then number seven, welcome back in the paid world. Sign in the contract and have a great start towards the first 90 days full of energy and enthusiasm. That was a critical part as well. This great start is so important. And James, having you in the call right now, working with you now for four weeks, I hope you see this piece of enthusiasm every day that I enjoy being here. If you take all of these letters, the bold letters together result in roadmap, which stands for a planned way forward instead of just a journey. For all others in such a situation, I suggest proper planning, exploring and acting wisely to find the right balance between just moving to another company and taking the chance for a real change. Living in Sydney for three and a half, nearly four years now, the daily effort into building a network paid off as a rewarding experience. Over my corporate career, I transitioned from an introvert to an active networker with a passion to help others. The redundancy helped me to learn more lessons than expected while feeling happier and more useful than ever before. That's how the book story ended. But it goes a little bit further. Let me show you. First of all, what you learn when you come to a new place, you transition yourself from a tea drinker into a coffee drinker. So um, there's great coffee in Switzerland, quite Italian way, but I simply love our flat white, in particular when it's served for my former neighbor who is an Australian roasting champion. That is the guy over here. And if you continue, there are three more, what I would like to show you as well. So I've been working when I came to Australia in a company called Cloud Recover, which has been then uh, rebranded into Keep It Safe. So I have Laura, my former marketing uh, specialist on the call as well. So then this was when I uh, basically launched the rebranding at the New South Wales Business Chamber, speaking in front of 150 people, uh, my 60 second elevator pitch. That was a nice experience, really loved that. So working with these associations is a great rewarding experience, in particular when learning about them, not just to pitching by myself. And JP having you here as well, so that is uh, what we discussed because that's how we work now with the Australian British Chamber of Commerce. Then the next one, I moved in September 18 when the other second book came out, I moved to Noggin, which is a software of crisis management, risk management. Today I would say that software working against bushfires or COVID-19, actually used by plenty of organizations um, for their risk management needs uh, in various places like business continuity, working together with Deloitte as my alliance partner. Huge learning on this one as well. And then, and that is the new of, uh, of this month, or let's say of, of April, and not everyone here on the call knows it yet. So I joined on 6th of April, today, four weeks ago, I joined what I call my dream company, Hootsuite, for those who don't know, as I have this passion for social media, for organization, it's quite difficult to manage social media, every network by itself, but you need to have a real huge proper management tool for this, and that is Hootsuite, where huge organizations get even monetary benefit out of working all their social media needs, their analytics, and the knowledge out of this one. When I've been with HP, working this passion on hardware like great notebooks at that time where they have been created and invented all of this one. I'm now at the place where all the needs of social media are not followed but are set as a market leader. And uh, this picture that you can see here, that was my most viewed post on LinkedIn with 24,000 views. That was basically the virtual onboarding and I'm very pleased and happy that this is, despite the fact that we don't go in offices today, that this has been a very, very rewarding experience. And I really must say thank you also to James Parkinson here in the call to get me on this journey so well. You can see also some interesting things here. Alexander often calls me an owl because of me somehow apparently liking 
um, to, to work quite late into, the late into the night. And she always calls our home here on Prague a nest. At Hootsuite, the officers are called nest and the employees are called owls, so it, it was meant to be. So I'm very happy to be the senior partner and alliance manager for Asia Pacific and now work with partners such as LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Adobe, Google, Meltwater and so on. Great company, really love that, happy to be there and that we have the birthday exactly four years after I came, I came further. So having said all of this one, Paul, I'm happy to give back to you with only one comment, the nicest ever birthday dots I've ever seen birthday cakes actually are from Romania, from my former work colleague Ludmila. I hope you are in the call, Ludmila. And Paul, you wanted to also to talk something. Paul, are you back? So let me let me unmute all. So, Paul, are you there? Yeah. Not, not, like not in the moment. So I hope you all did. You all understand what I've been talking. Was it okay like this? Was it fine? Yes. Was able to hear? Yes. I hope so. so that is good. Uh, the cake is nice. I like the cake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, in, the interesting thing is, at a normal, at a normal um, a birthday party, we would have, of course, a proper cake and put and cut it into pieces so that is not so uh, so, so possible these days on a, on a virtual zoom one so then what i want to oh, I, I could i could say so i got one cake from the neighbors a nice new york cheesecake so at least there's something i don't know if you have any kind of cake but maybe if you have a kind of a drink in front of you that we can at least have a drink together that would be that would be actually quite nice in the meantime by the way i see and must say many thanks for all of you who wrote on the chat it was not easy for me to reply to all of them while i've been talking but i find it very nice because that's also recorded i can read it then afterwards so i really like that so um Let's say, if you can have a drink, that would be quite good. Um, I can't come around with a champagne or something like this, and, uh, uh, but at least I can, I can maybe make a picture with all of you somewhere there. Gunnar. Yes, Paul. Happy birthday. Oh, yes. <laughs> we should all sing it. Are we going to sing? All right, let's, let's have a sing. sing. Happy birthday to you. 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 In the meantime, I'm going to the candle. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's synchronize, okay? You need to blow the candle. Yes. Okay. Will you show me the candle? Yeah, it's on. Look at my screen. <laughs> Let me find where you are, Paul. Congratulations. Yeah, there, there. there it is. Okay. Don't forget yeah. to take so a So make wish. a wish and then blow the candle. No, make a wish and don't tell us. I do a wish. I have yes. a wish and now I blow the candle. Okay. okay. Yeah, very good. Ah. <laughs> prima, prima. In, the, in the meantime, there is so many who joined uh, also afterwards, who all have been on a journey with me for either the last one to four years here, 
Well, even much, 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 much longer. Nina, thanks that you also joined from Barcelona. I just saw that as well. Lovely. So that, that's, very, that's very nice. We have Happy birthday, Nina. Germany. Danke, Nina. We have uh, Spain. We have Romania. Uh, from everywhere. New Zealand. Oh, we didn't know. Blade there with you. And I thought, thank you for all of you. It, it was very kind to do this experience over Zoom, which is quite untypical. Uh, thanks for singing. <laughs> maybe one thing when it comes to the books. Okay, something. You know, I thought about a little of a surprise. Yesterday I went to the Blue Mountains and I got an idea. And a nice one, hopefully. Because you know, when normally we have a book launch, and that can happen at the book launch maybe of Jeff. I attended yours for your second book in August last year, for example. Then you had the pleasure to sign all of the books. The only thing, okay. I have only one book here, and not everyone maybe has a physical um, book to get. But when we had the leaders of influence, a physical book launch as well. So I thought what I could do is one thing. So I promise in the invite, everyone will get the story which is in the book. Okay. Eight hours after we started the event, we'll be on the landing page by tomorrow. So that will come anyway. So that's obvious. Okay, very nice. But that is just text. A real book Man, it's maybe personal. So then what we do? I thought I wanted to give you a little bit more than just only the book, knowing that my portion is not that big and it was not the only contribution that I've done in writing here. So my idea is like this. I created and I started this a digital experience of this. Lessons I learned the book's companion. And Sam, this is new for you as publisher as well. So what it will be look like, I take, let me move the zoom pictures over here. I take, first of all, I want to give those who want it a personally hand signed PDF. So I will sign it on paper. I will put it in the PDF that you have the whole book as a PDF. For those who would like to have um, signed paperback, the real book, some want that. I know Olin you want, or you have actually, but uh, Lina, you said you want. Yeah, I can do this as well. But then, then I tell you how many I need. But I thought there was something else what I could do as well. Because the story itself, I only read portions of it. I have an audio version and I have a video version with more of these pictures. Not only of lessons I learned, so leaders of influence, and even further, I contributed to a book called Leading Well, which is the second book of the Institute of Managers and Leaders, where I contributed with a case study about how curiosity can influence emotional intelligence. So all three books, Lessons I Learned, Leaders of Influence, Leading Well, I'm reading out of them, and I have all of the book launch stories and videos of this available is like a kind of a mini course. I, guess I will kick off in the email that you will get tomorrow morning. So for those who really would like to have to want that, so then that I will write you about that. That will be available to so all the three book contributions from me, including the recording from today. And there will be a website where you can order this. That comes on top of having just the text available. I hope that is the best way to simulate a real life experience in a virtual world, which can then stay and live long a little bit longer. Does that make sense? Yeah, very good. That's uh, the best contribution of this. So then I'm utilizing a little bit of digital um, uh, digital marketing tools that you might have seen in the invite. That's the way how I can, can make that happen. I created an online course recently uh, about social selling. Uh, about end of last year, so then I take all of this technology to make this a little bit more uh, and with some more stories behind. So that's what I, that's a, basically the surprise that I would like to have and that available um, in two versions, basically the, uh, the just the PDF version, which I hand sign inside, and then also the paperback version. The one, the first one will be around $39, the other one dollars $59, including shipment and everything. So that is basically what I wanted to share with you. And for those who know me well, I'm a big fan of magic numbers. 
I'm a big fan of repeating letters. For those who know my online course, seven chapters starting with an E. For those who attended my meetup group, Social Selling Sydney, my program has seven letters starting with an E. What a nice coincidence that all three books starting with an L. Spanish, like learning. And that's what life is about, what I learned in Australia, lifelong learning. So that's how this all stuff comes together. And here's a picture of this letter of going to networking events that was from my meetup group last year in May, nearly a year ago. And some of you I see here also in the call, like Victor is there, Basam is there, Leah is there, and, and a couple of more. Mirek, I see you in the end here as well. Uh, I love that. So, dear friends, so this is what I wanted to share. And I thank you very much for attending. Uh, any Anyone want to say something to all of you? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Birthday party. Legend. Much love. Great, good. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you. 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 Hey, hey, so many people. That's nice. Thank you. Have a good birthday. I will read them slowly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm happy, happy to, to answer all of them. Hey, so that looks nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And viele Grüße nach aus der Schweiz. Ciao. Danke, Ingo. Danke für kommen. Super, dich mal wieder sehen zu haben. I love to have my former customers in the call. That's really good. And yeah. so later, 15 years later. That, that's really yeah. Fantastic. Really it, it was always inspiring. So thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Very okay. Much. Bye. 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 And thank you for inviting. Bye. Bye. All the best. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ciao, ciao. So, hey, Mohit. Marius, you have been the best singer on the whole call. <laughs> Sylvia, nice background. Love that. Without him. Thank you. That's not very nice. That looks really nice. Ciao, Jose. See you, brother. Bye, Gunnar. Happy birthday again. Happy birthday. Again. See you soon. Mille, mille. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Uh, Miller, thank you for your nice cake on the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Guna. And uh, well, I was surprised. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> you do the most lovely birthday cakes in the whole Facebook community. I see you been doing so. They're really nice. Mila, nice to see you as well. Yes, thank you. Bye. Was, although it was at the very end, uh, it took a lot longer than expected. But happy birthday! Happy to see you again. <laughs> thank you, Nina. <laughs> yeah, uh, all the best. Thank you. Thanks, Amira. Thanks, Alicia. Thanks, Val. You're welcome. You here as well. <laughs> bye, bye. Yes, Andre. We're just closing. The camera and your voice. Thank you. Bye, Guna. Ciao, ciao. Hey, Paula. Good to see you there, Nicole. Bye, bye. Thank you.
Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there'll be another option where you can see everyone's just on the side. 